praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's clap our hands. Let's give God some praise in this place. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, let's clap our hands. Let's give God some praise in this house. Hallelujah. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. And he's worthy of the honor. I'm going to ask everyone to please stand as we go to God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come saying thank you. We thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, God, for another opportunity just to be inside your house. We pray, God, that you will have thine own way, God. Whatever you want to do in the service, God, flow however you want to flow, God. We pray, God, God, that your glory will fall fresh upon us even right now. We ask, God, that you will touch every person that is in this sanctuary today, God. Whatever they need, God, meet their needs now in the name of Jesus, God. We pray, God, for those who are on their way, God. Bless them now. In the name of Jesus. And we pray, God, that you will touch every singer, every usher, every preacher today, God. That you will use them in the mighty way, God. We pray now, God, for our special speaker this morning, God. God, that you will use him like you have never used him before. And we give your name all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And it's in the name of Jesus we do pray. Let every heart say amen. Now, come on and clap your hands and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Please remain standing as we go to God and pray for worship. My God is a real good God. Yes, he is. My God is a real good God.
Come on, put your hands together, give God some praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask everyone to come down to the altar for an altar prayer. A family that prays together, stays together. Amen. Yep. I am burning up. Wait, this morning. The Bible says that whose report shall we believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. With our minds on Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come saying thank you. We thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, God, for last night's laying down. We thank you, God, that you woke us up early this morning with brand new grace and mercy. We thank you, God, that we have the activities of our limbs. We thank you, God, that we are in our right minds this morning. We thank you, God, for another opportunity that we've come into this house. God, we come praying now, God, for every person that is in this, that's around this altar. God, I don't know what they're facing. God, I don't know what they're going through, God, but in the name of Jesus, we give it to you now. In the name of Jesus. I come praying, God, that you give them strength even right now. God, that you give them peace that surpasses all understanding. Come praying, God, that you will supply every one of their needs according to your riches and your glory. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I say thank you for their life this morning. I thank you, God, that you have allowed them another opportunity just to say thank you. I come praying, God, for every person, God, that may have cancer this morning. God, heal them now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for the ones that you have already healed. Yes, thank you, Lord. And God, not just today, God, but we celebrate your works every single day. Yes. And God, we honor you today. Yes. We come praying now, God, for see the road as a whole. We thank you, God, for 63 years of faithful service. Yes, God. We thank you, God, for keeping the doors open, God. We thank you, God, for keeping the members encouraged now. In the name of Jesus, continue to lead us and guide us in the way that you want us to go. Yes. I come praying, God, that even right now, God, that you would touch each member of this church. Yeah. God, that you would touch every visitor, God, that may walk through these doors. God, that they would know that yeah. this is a house of peace and a house of prayer. Yeah. And we thank you in advance, God, for what you're doing in the season of our lives. Yeah. God, we thank you for the new addition that you've added to our church. You, we celebrate your works this morning. God, in the name of Jesus, we come praying, God, that you will bless our anniversary on next Sunday. Yes, Let your glory fall fresh in this place on next Sunday. God, do whatever you want to do. Yeah. We come praying now, God, for our speaker. God, give him a word, God, that's yeah. preached to your people. God, we come praying even now, God, for Grace Temple Baptist Church. Yes, God, that you will lead them and guide them in the way that you want them to go. God, give them a pastor, God, that's according to your own heart. God, we come praying, God, for First Lady Broadus this morning. God, touch her now. God, touch her now from the top of her head down to the soles of her feet. God, I pray now, God, for the entire Broadus family even now. God, continue to work a miracle in their, in their lives. God, I come praying, God, that you continue to touch uh, Sister Betty Berry this morning, God. God, continue to heal her body now in the name of Jesus. Give her strength now, God, where she might be weak. We come praying, God, that you would touch every person, God, that doesn't know you as a part of their sins. Save them now. Convert them now, God. And let them know, God, that you are God. And you're God all by yourself. We come praying, God, for every person, God, that's behind prison walls this morning. 
God, touch them now. Protect them, God, from all hurt, harm, and danger. And God, we just want to say thank you. God, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And God, we just want to say thank you. God, even though some of us, God, may have had a, a long week, a hard week, God, we thank you for allowing us just to make it another week. And God, we just want to say thank you. God, keep our bodies strong. God, keep our minds intact, God. I bind the hand of the enemy even right now. God, that depression will not consume us. God, that suicidal thoughts, God, will never come into our minds. God, we just bind every trick of the enemy even right now. And God, you get all the glory. And we give your name all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And it's in the name of Jesus we do pray. Let it be hard to say, amen. Come on and clap your hands and give God some praise. We know that God has called us and compelled us to be good stewards over all that he has given to us. The Bible declares that he loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Uh, so let's be cheerful in our giving this morning. Uh, you can't be God's giving no matter how hard you try. Amen. Uh, so if you need a tithe and offering envelope, please raise your hands high and our ushers will serve you at this time. Amen. If you need a tithe and offering envelope, please raise your hands high and our ushers will serve you at this time. Amen. Also, if you're writing a check, please make your checks payable to the Cedar Grove Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand together. We're going to pray and we're going to bring our gifts unto the Lord. Amen. Everyone standing. Everyone standing. Even if you don't have nothing to give, stand anyway. You're standing by faith. Amen. Amen. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power. Amen. With our minds on Christ, Father, we come saying thank you. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to give. Bless those guys who are giving. We ask God that you would touch those who want to give but just don't have it to give. But you give them the spirit to give on next time. And it's in the name of Jesus we do pray. Let every heart say amen. Please follow the ushers to the room, please.
have some gifts that we want to give away uh, uh, again this week for all of uh, to, in celebration of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Amen? Amen. 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 We have gifts for everybody. Amen. Amen. Uh, we want to make sure that we uh, put a, a pin on you and, and celebrate you while you are still here. Amen? Amen. How many people know that God is still a healer? Amen. Hallelujah. So good to see Auntie Valerie this morning, uh, who is a cancer survivor. Amen. Amen. And then we also celebrate Brother Christian Ross, who is also a cancer survivor. Amen. God is still a healer. He's doing great and mighty things uh, in the body of Christ. And we want to uh, give you these gifts um, that we have purchased on behalf of Cedar Grove. Amen. 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 We want to do that. Um, but it seems like they need more time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the preacher up. Amen. Amen. He is no stranger uh, to this house, to this church. Uh, he is a son of Cedar Grove. Amen. I said he is a son of Cedar Grove. Amen. I'll present the son and introduce the others. Our very own Elder Cecil Thompson. Come on, let's celebrate him as he comes. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, let's put our hands together and give the Lord a great praise this Sunday morning. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we shall have your word and the entrance of your word brings spirit and it brings life. And so, Father, we pray now that you bless us these next few moments in your word and we vow to give you the glory, honor, and praise for it in Jesus' name. Everybody shout amen. Amen. Let's go to the gospel according to Luke. The gospel according to Luke. Praise the name of the Lord. Something the Lord put in my spirit and my studying time. And I just want to share it with you all on this morning. Luke chapter 17. Hallelujah. We're going to read verses 11 through 19. Luke chapter 17. With great respect and esteem to our leader, our pastor, Reverend Denon Williams. Amen. Amen. To our first lady, first lady Celeste. Amen. Praise God for her. First Lady Emeritus is here this morning. God bless you, Mother. We love you. Praise God. And to all of the officials, the officers, the members of the family of Cedar Grove, good to be back in the house of the Lord. Luke 17, 11 through 19. Do we have it? Shall I got it? And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men there that were lepers, which stood afar off. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Let me read that again. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Just look at one neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. preacher gonna preach about, go back and say thank you. Go back and say thank you. Brothers and sisters, the late Bishop Walter Hawkins penned the gospel hit song in the late 70s. These words were recorded. God has not promised me sunshine. That's not the way it's going to be. But a little rain mixed with God's sunshine. A little pain helps me appreciate the good times. The climatic chorus of that song simply says, be grateful. This 
morning's classic lesson is tailored to teach us the importance of saying thank you. Jesus enters into Jerusalem and passes through Samaria and Galilee and he finds ten leopards there. Quickly, swiftly, hurriedly, and expeditiously, please allow me the opportunity to paint the circumference of this text to you. The Bible declares that Jesus enters into the place where the lepers were. Why is this important, brothers and sisters? Because the lepers hung out in an environment that was called a leper colony. Uh, can I teach it while I preach it for a few seconds? The Bible says that Jesus passed through Samaria. He passed through Galilee to get to the place where the lepers were. Now let me explain to you that many lepers uh, suffered from this disease called leprosy. Understand that leprosy was a serious disease. The terrible condition literally would take the skin off of your body. Your fingers would begin to deteriorate and your toes would evaporate right in the presence of others. It's not only painful, but it leaves a bad odor that cannot be removed. Sores would cover your body. Can I teach about leprosy for a minute here? Sores would cover your body and because of the disease being so contagious, you must disassociate yourselves from all humanity and civilization. In fact, if one was stricken with this fatal affliction, the Bible teaches us that in that time, you would have to mark those individuals as unclean. Uh, you had to live alone. You had to live outside of the camp of others with no friends, no family, no one to help you, no one to assist you. And you lived in what was referred to as a leper colony because you were unclean. Everyone you hung out with was unclean. Aren't you glad this morning that God does not treat you as your sins deserve? Aren't you grateful that we don't have to identify ourselves, hallelujah to God, by our struggles? Aren't you glad that we don't have to identify ourselves by our conditions and by our shortcomings? What if when we came to church, we would have to walk around with a sign on our back called liar. What if when we preached in the pulpit, you looked at us and you saw adulterer or fornicator or deceiver. That's why you thank God for Jesus who had enough compassion and had enough love to meet you where you were. Uh, just look at your neighbor for the first time and give him a low five and tell him he'll meet you right where you are. He'll meet you at the point of your need. That's what I love about Jesus that you know you don't have to go always looking for him but he'll come right to where you are in your low place in the crack house. I can't hear nobody while, while you're drinking, while you're smoking, while you're hanging out, while you're in the club. He'll come and meet you right where you are. And so because leprosy was a disease that affected not only your physical appearance, but also your spiritual man, it got inside to the core of these individuals. And what you must understand is that we have a lot of people who may be stricken with a spiritual form of leprosy. See, the natural form of leprosy, you can see because uh, of the reaction and because of the things that would happen when you were stricken with leprosy. But let me suggest to you this morning, brothers and sisters, that we are coming to church and there are individuals who are dealing with spiritual leprosy. Ah, we are coming to church and there are individuals who are suffering with spiritual conditions and spiritual sensationalisms and that's why the apostle Paul picks it up to the church of Galatia and he says when your brother is overtaken in a fault, when your brother is overtaken in some form of iniquity, ye who are spiritual restore such a one with the spirit of meekness because everybody in the 
church may not look like they have something going on wrong, but my late father used to say, you don't know who ate last night. I can't hear nobody. You don't know who went to bed last night and had their own house to sleep in. And that's why it behooves all of us to treat one another the right way. Come on, somebody. That's why it behooves you not to look up and down at your brothers and your sisters. If there's any place that you should feel the love of Jesus Christ, if there's any place that you should feel wholeness and redemption and recovery, it ought to be the house of God. But we're living in a day and time now where the enemy has crept in. I can't hit nobody in here. And now we've got individuals that come to church and they seek to devise and they seek to plot and to scheme and to manipulate. But the house of God should be a house of prayer for all people. And if you're sick, you ought to come to the house of God and get well. If you're hungry, you ought to be able to come to the house of God and get something to eat. If you're naked, you ought to come to the house of God and get something to wear. This should be a place of restoration. And so these ten men stood afar off. And the Bible says they cried with a loud voice. Jesus, have mercy on us. Listen, family, if we want God to do something for us, we cannot be scared. We cannot be silent. We cannot be soft-spoken. We cannot be shamed. We cannot be shy. We cannot be sophisticated. Come on. We cannot be uh, sarcastic. See, if you want God to do something for you, sometimes you gotta get indignant. Sometimes you gotta quit acting like you got it all together and tell God, I need your help. And see, that's why I can't stand some church people, because they come to church and act like everything is going right. No, baby, you know your kids is messed up. You know you got more bills than you got money. You know your head is going crazy. But this is a place where God will hear and answer your prayer. Give your neighbor a little five for the second time. Tell them, no judgment zone. No judgment zone. I got some mess ups. You got some mess up. I got some hiccups. You got I don't care. I got the mic in my hand. I'm preaching, but I got some mess ups just like the usher, Sister Moncrief in the back. You got some mess ups. We all got some mess ups. We got a God who here answer our prayers and save us from our troubles. And when you really need something from God, you church like you all stuck up and you all debonair. No, you ought to come crying. Lord, it's me. Lord, save me. Lord, heal my family. Lord, deliver my children. The children that were there that had leprosy realized that they had nothing to lose. And so the Bible said that they cried out with a loud voice, which tells me that if you really need something from God, you got to open up your mouth and you got to say something. Tell your neighbor, speak up. You gotta speak up, baby. You, you can't be that low and that messed up and that estranged that you can't open up your mouth when you need God to do something. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And I found out something, Aisha. There's a difference between talking and screaming. When you scream, it means that you exaggerate your voice. When you holler, that means that the conditions of that situation require for you to speak a little bit louder because you want the person to hear what you're saying. You're emphasizing something. What am I saying to somebody in here? You gotta open up your mouth and go crazy. Scream if you have to. Holler if you have to. Your neighbor don't have to understand what your holler means, but when you holler, the Lord knows exactly what your cry is. The Bible says that they have to Speak up. Tell somebody you gotta speak up. You gotta speak up. You can't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ where it is the power of God unto salvation for each of us that believe. You need God to do something for you. You gotta speak up. And not only do you have to speak up, brothers and sisters, you gotta step up. Everybody shout, step up. Uh, stop making excuses for what's wrong with you and walk into your freedom and walk into your deliverance. Come on, somebody. You got to step up. Bishop Rodgers would say you got to participate in your own deliverance. You can't keep uh, pointing the finger at what's wrong with you when God has given you opportunities to exercise what's right with you. Uh, and I thought about church.
just last week, I was talking to your first lady, my sister, and she was at the house with us, and first lady emeritus was talking to her and encouraging her, and she was saying, I got the kids, and I got to make sure this is right, and we have the church, and just tell somebody just the cares of life, just the cares of life that weigh you down, and mama stopped her in the dining room, brother Andrew, in the midst of her complaining, in the midst of her queerless spirit, and she said, you know what, Celeste, you got somewhere to live, come on somebody, your husband is still alive, your children are all right, they have never missed a meal, I can't hear nobody, you know what God was using mama to do, to shift the focus from all the things that's wrong, because that's what the enemy wants you to do, he wants you to say, I ain't got no money, and here I go, and look, this is, baby, it could be worse, there's somebody sleeping outside, there's somebody who don't know where their next meal is going to come from, there's somebody who ain't got no money, ain't got no job, ain't and you got to appreciate what you do have because if you tell God me this thing if you tell God thank you for where you are right now and for what you do have he'll make room for you and open doors for you because thank you makes room for more yeah. Yeah. tell your neighbor step up step up to the plate and ask God what can I do yeah. the Lord took me back to some notes I told Before the Lord sent him home to be with the Lord. Ha. Ah, here's what he said. Start where you are. Use what you got. And do what you can. How many of y'all remember that? Start exactly at the level that you want. That's good. Let's see. Let's see. Use what you got. And do what you can. Stop expecting God to do for you what you can do for yourself. This should say, I'm preaching better than y'all responding in here. When you participate in your own deliverance, you're literally telling God, I exercise my faith. I believe that you're going to do what you said you're going to do. Watch this. Jesus could have healed them without them ever moving. But he wanted to activate their faith. And God is asking us this morning, how bad what you've been asking him for. How bad do you want the job? Because when you really want the job bad, huh, you'll go out and you'll fill out the applications. Come on, somebody. You, you'll go to the interviews. You'll do whatever you have to do. And just because one no comes, it don't mean that you get discouraged. You keep going because you really want it bad. Come on, somebody. How bad do you want the house? Because if you really want the house that bad, you'll pay your bills on time. I can't hear nobody. You'll clean up your credit. Come on. You'll save your money. You'll invest. Come on, how bad do you want uh, 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 Ray Ray and Pookie and them to leave you alone? Because if you really want it bad, you'll quit answering their phone calls in the middle of the night. I can't hear nobody. You'll quit answering their text messages. You'll, you'll quit responding to booty calls because you know I can't hear nobody in here because you know that you want it real bad. God will help you, but you gotta help yourself. Start where you are. Do what you can. Use what you got. So the Bible declares that they have to step up. Here's my final thought as I go to my seat. The Bible says that. Told them, go show yourself to the priest. Ten of them go show themselves to the priest. Yeah. The Bible says that they were healed. All right, all right. But only one of them. Hmm came back. Alright, alright. Look at what Jesus says. This is, this, is, this is a part of the reason why I just love the word of God. Right. It just gets in me and I, I, I try to study it. Bishop used to tell me, son, you can't give it all. You can't give it all. Right. Yeah, look at what Jesus says. Yeah. Jesus says, huh, verse number 17, were there not ten cleansed? Uh -huh. Where are the nine? I heard that. You heard that? Said, Look what yeah, the 16th yeah, said. Yeah. The one that came back fell down on his face. Y'all got your Bibles open? Yeah, yeah. Sat at his feet, giving him thanks. Yeah. And he was a Samaritan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why is that important? Mm. He was a Samaritan. Mm -hmm. huh, well, it was important because Jesus was not a 
Samaritan. All right, all right. Jesus came down through the Jewish oracles yeah, of traditional yeah, yeah. So what Jesus is literally saying is, all of the ones that belonged to me didn't have enough sense to come back and tell me thank you. All right, all right, all right. But the one yeah. that didn't have no kin to me, yeah. <laughs> the one with me is the one that God said to prophesy in this house and tell somebody he's getting ready to use the one that you least expect the one that's been overlooked the one that's been underdog come on somebody the one that's been underappreciated the one that you see and that, that you think is underqualified the one that you think is disqualified the very one who was a Samaritan who was not a part of Jesus's culture is the one that had enough sense to come back and tell him I'm done with this. Look at what verse 19 says. He tells him, Arise, go your way, because your faith has made you whole. All right, all right. Let me tell you something. All right, all right. There's a difference yeah. between being healed yeah. and being made whole. All right, all right, all right. Good God Almighty, this is good. Yeah. The Bible said that nine of them were healed, yeah. but only one of them right. were made whole. Remember I told you they had leprosy. Yeah. The Bible says that leprosy was this condition I taught, taught you at the beginning of this lesson that made your skin fall off of your body. It was so bad that you looked like you had leprosy. That's how they knew to mark you as unclean. And then the studying of leprosy goes on to say that the odor, the stench was so bad that you couldn't stand to be around normal humanity because you smelled so negatively. So I can imagine that the nine lepers were just so excited to get back into civilization and to get back with their friends and their family because the Bible don't tell us how long they were a part of the leper colony. But if you've been down for any amount of time, that's long enough. And so the word says that they were a part of this leper colony and they went their way. They went back to their families. They went back to their loved ones. They went
standing in the presence of the Lord. My time is up. Thank you, Jesus. God is saying, I don't want to just heal you. I want to make you whole. And it's simple. All we got to do is tell God thank you. It's a simple lesson. Don't get caught up on complaining, saints. I know the cares of this world will weigh you down. That's what Sister Celeste and I were talking about. It just seems like if it ain't one thing, it's another. But Sister Richmond, that's a distraction from the enemy to throw you off of focus. Do you know you'll spend more time complaining than realizing God has been good to you? You don't think God's been good? Just go take a drive down there to Skid Row. You don't think God's been good? My dad would say, come roll with me to the hospital yeah. when I'm going to pray for the sick. Yeah. And I'm passing by people who have been on life support yeah. for months at a time. Yeah. You think God's been good? Yeah. Yeah. Look at the family members yeah. who lost everything yeah. that they had. Yeah. I was reading yeah. the sermon that Bishop said, start where you are. Use what you got and do what you can. And in that sermon, he gave an illustration I'm closing with this of a young lady in our church, Sister Tara Baker. He said Sister Tara was at the gas station and he saw Sister Tara. This was in his sermon that particular day. And he said that Sister Tara drove up to the gas station pump. And when she got to the pump, she was complaining because all she had was $10. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Just enough to get you from point A, come on, to point B. You ain't got enough to fill up your gas tank. You wish you could, you just ain't got it like that. He said she was complaining as the car passed her, drove off. She said she looked at the pump and it said six dollars. She said, and while she was complaining about having ten dollars, the Lord stopped her and said, the car that just left only had six dollars. What's the purpose of that? You think you got it bad. But it's always somebody that's worse often than you. Everyone lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. First thing you do is repent. Lord, I'm sorry for complaining, for not being grateful. For not being thankful. For not appreciating the little things. The blessings that you've given to us. And Lord, we pray this morning. I pray that you help us to appreciate. And to tell you thank you. Father, not to complain. Not to murmur. Not to be indignant, Father. Not to be querulous. But to be grateful. us Lord to be thankful help us Lord to have a spirit of thanksgiving in the name of Jesus now Father I pray for these your people whose hands are lifted up Father I pray that they move from being healed to being made whole in the name of Jesus Father I pray that after they have heard this word, that you will touch even the core of their spirit man and that you will heal God from the inside, 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 from the inside. I pray, oh God, that you touch them, God, and that you strengthen them. Father, even as we celebrate and commemorate those who have battled cancer and breast cancer, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you heal of all diseases, that you heal of all infirmities, leukemia, thyroid, Father, in the name of Jesus, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, sugar diabetes, Father, AIDS, cancer, heal in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus. Yes. Rheumatoid arthritis healed this morning in the name of Jesus. And Father, now that you have taught us how to obtain access to wholeness, we say thank you. We say, come on. We say it loudly. We say it loudly. We say it. We say it loudly. We lose our minds saying thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you for what you're getting ready to do in the lives of your people. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank God. Amen. Come on, lose your mind for a few seconds. Come on. I hear your hands, but I don't hear your mouth. Lose your mind for a few seconds. Come on, let's erect this place with a quick praise. We don't have much time here. A quick praise. Open your mouth right here. Come on, I'm going to teach you how to do this. Open your mouth and scream. Somebody holler in this place. Somebody shout in this place. You don't have to have a lot of loud words. Just say thank you. 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 Just say it over and over. Say it 10,000 times. Say it 20,000 times. Thank you for the food I eat. Thank you for the clothes on my back. Thank you for the shoes on my feet. Thank you for the money in my pocket. Thank you, God. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my house. Thank you, oh God. Thank you for everything just as it is. Thank you for my job. I may not like everything on my job. My boss may be on my head, but I got a job. And I say thank you. Thank you for the car that I drive. May not be the car that I want, but it gets me from point A to point B. Thank you. Thank you for the food I eat. It may not be steak. may not be lobster. It may not be on a cart. But Lord, I thank you because my top ramen fills me up. Thank you because me and a sausage. And so I had to make me a couple of sandwiches this week. And I was grateful for the ham and cheese sandwiches. Throw a little mayonnaise on it. Throw a little mustard. Hallelujah. And tell God thank you because somebody somewhere is digging in a trash can. But it didn't seem fit to let none of these things. Can we give God praise for the preacher this morning? Yeah. Yeah. I said, can we give God praise yeah. for the preacher this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. An awesome dynamic man of God who allowed God yeah. to use him every yeah. single time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. My situation could be worse, but I tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. One more time, let's give God some praise in this place. At this time, we're going to make ready the, the gifts that we have to, to pass out to all the membership today. Hallelujah. We want to be a blessing to you this morning. I said we want to be a blessing to you this morning. Amen. I'm not sure what the gifts are, but I saw some footballs in there. And I saw some bags in there. Amen. We want to be a blessing to you. Uh, this is what our bishop taught us. Amen. I said, this is what our bishop taught us. And um, each year, uh, our bishop will give out uh, gifts to the entire body of Christ uh, in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And this is how we keep his legacy alive. I said, this is how we keep this legacy alive. Hallelujah. And I thank God for the tears of leadership of this church. Um, Mama Maggie Wilson and Sister Shannon Wilson and Sister Naisha Jones for not dropping the ball. Amen. Come on, let's appreciate them. Amen. Oh, come on. That's me. You can do better than that. Let's appreciate them. Hallelujah. For not dropping the ball. They're coming. Amen. I appreciate them. They think about things that I don't think about. They do things uh, so consistently. And I appreciate them. They make my job easy. Amen. I said they make my job easy. Amen. Amen. Sister Naisha is coming. Um, and they have some footballs um, that we're going to give to all the men. Amen. And we have some bags for all the ladies. Amen. We just want to be a blessing to you. 
today one more time. Can we give God praise for see the glory of this morning? see the kids, they are waiting now, they see some football, they're like, oh man, I can get a toy today, amen. Uh, we just want to be a blessing to you, and as they are passing out um, these gifts, remember that next week is our 63rd church anniversary. Amen. I'm having two claps right there, I said next Sunday is our 63rd church anniversary, amen. And we're going to be here in our blue and silver. Uh, we're going to be looking good, smelling good, and giving God all of the praise on next Sunday. Amen. Uh, we have a day full of events, and we want you to come and be a uh, part of that Cedar Grove. You already know financially what we have asked you to do, and we want to make sure that we fulfill our obligation to our church. Amen. Uh, next Sunday, both the Grace Temple Church and the Israel Baptist Church will be our special guests. Amen. Uh, let's clap our hands and praise God for them. Amen. For coming and being a part of our celebration. And we honor God for what's getting ready to happen on next Sunday. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited about what God is doing in our church. I said I'm so excited about what God is doing in our church. Amen. He's doing great and mighty things. Amen. Amen. Let's keep, uh, let's keep uh, Sister Drummer's uh, friend uh, in prayer this morning. She's on uh, life support. She told me this morning uh, we want to keep uh, her friend, uh, Sister Beverly Rachel, in prayer this week. Amen. Amen. I said we want to keep her in prayer uh, on this week. Amen. Let's not forget that Wednesday, uh, this coming Wednesday at 12 noon, we'll be here for our noonday Bible study. Amen. And we give God praise for all of the work, all the workings that is happening uh, within Cedar Grove. We're getting the church painted both on the inside and the outside. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. We give God praise for all that he is doing in this place. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet and let's get ready for Sunday school this morning. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Amen. The Dodgers are going to the World Series. Praise the Lord. I was a little nervous. <laughs> Hallelujah. Green Bay got a week off, so I'm good today. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank God for all of you with our minds on Christ. Father, we thank you for all that our eyes have seen, all that our ears have heard. God, we thank you for Reverend Thompson this morning. God, we thank you for allowing your spirit to rest upon him this morning. We ask God that all that he has poured into us, God, that you will pour back into him even now. I pray, God, that everywhere that his foot shall tread upon, it shall be blessed. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing within Cedar Grove this week, God. We thank you for the season that we're in, God, and we embrace all of the blessings that you are giving to us in this season. We say thank you, God. God, as we leave this place, we're never from your presence. Give us traveling grace so we can make it home safely and find things better than which we have left it. And it's in the name of Jesus we do pray. Let every heart say amen. amen. Give your name a hug and tell me that you love She didn't even know it.